So I've established that Joe Biden is an absolute train wreck. And now, finally, finally, maybe Bernie's been watching. Bernie is taking the gloves off. Let's start with this. Look, I, Joe and I are friends, and, and I truly like Joe. But what is imperative is that we defeat Trump, the most dangerous president in modern history. And that means you're going to have to have a huge voter turnout. You're going to have to get working people excited. You're going to have to get young people excited. Joe Biden voted and helped lead the effort for the war in Iraq, the most dangerous foreign policy blunder in the modern history of this country. Joe Biden voted for the disastrous trade agreements like NAFTA and permanent normal trade relations with China, which cost us millions of jobs. You think that's going to play well in Michigan or Wisconsin or Pennsylvania? You know, Joe Biden has been on the floor of the Senate uh, talking about the need to cut Social Security or Medicare or Medicaid. Joe Biden uh, pushed a bankruptcy bill which has caused enormous financial problems for working families. So if we're going to beat Trump, we need turnout. And to get turnout, you need energy and excitement. And I just don't think that that kind of record is going to bring forth the energy that we need to defeat Trump. Bernie! Bernie! Taking the gloves off! Bernie Sanders! Going for the KO! You also have Bernie's campaign with, I mean, Trump's outrageous assassination of Iraqi, uh, Iranian commander Soleimani. Bernie's campaign is calling out Biden for lying about his Iraq war record. record. Jeff Weaver, senior advisor, quote, It is appalling that after 18 years of Joe Biden still refuses to admit he was dead wrong on the Iraq war. The worst foreign policy blunder in modern American history, Jeff Weaver, senior advisor of the campaign, said. Unlike 23 of his Senate colleagues who got it right, Biden made explicitly clear that he was voting for war, and even after the war started, he boasted that he didn't regret it. So, and this is in response to Kerry going around the country lying about Joe Biden's war record. You also have uh, the great Nina Turner. This is an op-ed she wrote in an influential South Carolina paper. Uh, It's called The State. Headline, while Bernie Sanders has always stood up for African Americans, Joe Biden has repeatedly let us down. Let me throw that in the chat for those of you who want to read it. You have uh, Bernie Sanders' press secretary, Brianna Greyjoy, Joy Gray, excuse me. I wish the media political figures were as concerned about how Joe Biden's bad judgment has hurt black people as they are about the horse race. If they cover the substance of the article, they'd have to admit that the critique is true. Trump won't hesitate to talk about it. And she's referencing uh, Nina Turner's story. So, in my view, Bernie Sanders' campaign has learned from its mistakes in 2016, uh, if you want to play nice, go get a dog. If you want to be friends with Joe Biden or Hillary Clinton, go get a dog. This, you are in a knife fight for the presidency. You, if you're the Bernie Sanders campaign, you are up against, not only, you're not talking about just the corporate media. You're not just talking about um, the entire Democratic Party. You're not just talking about all of the think tanks. You're talking about the whole damn world, the global capitalist elite. That's who. That's what you're up against if you are a credible progressive challenger for the American presidency. I, I, I wish you would stop saying, listen, Joe Biden's a friend of mine. To hell with that. And to tell you the truth, I'm not a campaign advisor, but I'm happy to see uh, David Sirota put out the clip that I reported on last week. I don't, I don't know if they saw it here. I, I won't take credit for it. But what's unbelievable to me, I need Bernie Sanders. If I'm Bernie Sanders' campaign manager, if I'm Bernie Sanders' advisors, you need to start going after him on his phony middle-class Joe when it comes to the labor unions. 
uh, one of the, Biden's biggest strengths, one of the reasons that he has working class support is because he has been uh, labeled this friend of unions. He is not a friend of unions. Let, put aside NAFTA for a second, which he voted for. Put aside that he was pushing Hillary Clinton to support the TPP as the Democratic nominee. Put that aside for a second. Joe Biden is taking money from companies that uh, bash unions. Joe Biden is t- is has lobbyists who are fundraising tens of thousands of dollars for his campaigns that are union busters. Joe Biden did a, one of his first fundraisers with was with Comcast, a union buster. I think Bernie Sanders not only needs to talk about the votes that uh, Joe Biden has taken. Who you are is who you surround yourself with. Joe Biden is taking money with a who's who from Wall Street, from the healthcare industry, from big real estate, from Silicon Valley that are major union busters. Let him defend it on stage during that debate. Let him explain why are you doing fundraisers with Comcast, who has a history of bashing unions. You got Joe Biden here, who's a lot of his support comes because people think he is pro-union. He's not pro-union. I, I report on his fundraisers all the time. He's taking money from lobbyists. He's taking money from Wall Street executives. He's taking money from fossil fuel executives. He's taking money from um, major, major uh, people from the defense industry. He's taking money from companies that bash unions, that bust unions, that try to weaken unions. And by the way, He's taking money from financial lawyers who represent companies that don't want to collectively bargain. They defend. They defend in court. Skadden Arps. I just did a report on his fundraiser with Skadden Arps, which is a massive uh, lobbying firm, it, uh, legal firm, excuse me, that represented DuPont, that represented Pfizer, that represented J.P. Morgan, Bank of America. They also represent banks. They also represent corporations in avoiding uh, in in avoiding having to pay union dues, health benefits, and things like that. So it's great that Bernie is finally hitting him hard on Iraq bankruptcy bill. I'd like to see him bring up the fact that Joe Biden voted to repeal Glass Steagall, which is why we had the two thousand eight financial crash. I'd like to see him mention that Joe Joe Biden led the charge in the Senate to uh, deregulate uh, derivatives, which also led to the financial crash. Joe Biden, as vice president, went around Barack Obama and agreed to a deal with Mitch McConnell to extend the Bush tax cuts. This was in 2011 or 12. And Joe Biden is make is funding his campaign by a who's who of the corporate elite, many of whom are no friend of labor unions. It, Joe Biden, I understand there's a fine line and you don't want to go too hard where it alienates some of Joe Biden's voters and the corporate media is going to say, oh, Bernie's not being nice. So Bernie's playing negative, but it's now or never. You need to sow those seeds of doubt and you need to inform a lot of these uh, people making $50,000 or less or only having high school degrees a lot of Biden support makes only makes fifty thousand or less, or only has high school degrees. You need to dis- You need to get in their uh, minds and inform them. Uh, There's a lot you don't know about this guy. There's a lot you don't know about this guy. So, I hope we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. I hope this is the beginning. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Oh, oh, oh.